William Fox Pitt, the great William Fox Pitt, and the horse is having a bit of a look at the crowd. Well, this is one of our younger horses at just 10 years old. It's Little Fire, a horse that made its uh, five-star well, debut at Poe in southwest France Australia last year. This is very much a horse, and William, by his own admission, says it keeps him in the sport. You know, he's been he's been excited about this horse from when he first, first bought him as a youngster, and he's very much uh, said this is a horse he would, in his dreams, uh, love, love to win his last badminton on. Um, it's, 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 it's what's kept him going. It's a real class horse, isn't it? It's very good looking, finding all very easy and straightforward. He's, he's in some ways quite unlike William's typical horses in that he's very busy in the brain. And, um, yeah, he's, 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 he's quite spooky, quite gawky at the crowds. You see him jumped enormously over that. It's yeah, interesting. He had his horse, the horse's head was up and looking, and the horse was wanting the next fence, wasn't it? And that, that makes the difference. And he'll need to keep doing that because at that particular moment, going into that fence, he was bang on where we would expect him to be clockwise. And, and all the time now, your rhythm's being interrupted through the vicarage field. Well, it is, but the horse has got a lovely stride, and, and you know, it's kind of effortless to him. You can see how scopy he is, he is yeah, as well. Yeah. He's got an enormous jump with very little effort. So Tim Price is on his way lakewards, just jumping those uh, three brushes. And actually from that angle, because when we saw the first rider through straight, they look straight and you see you've got to actually shape the line. Yeah, you could just see him as he was after those brush fences. He just saluted the judge. He's obviously calling it a day. And um, the horse was finding life a bit exciting and a bit tricky at the beginning. He's going to give it a wash and get his feet wet, um, but he's called it a day, and it's a good decision. He did a great job, in my opinion, of, of getting that horse relaxed and get it used to the atmosphere, and um, there's always another day for the horse. Yeah, he taught it the right lesson. It's just when you mess about, we're still going to carry on, you're still going to work, and then when it's all going nicely, then maybe we might go home. So William Fox fit little fire up at the very far end of the course. He's a long way off the second part. And he's one to go on that inside line. You can either jump straight and make a shallow turn, which he did, which makes it a long three strides, but William was brave, went for that. And just something with this horse, although he is spooky, that the further they go, as Ian said earlier, the, the, the more used to the crowds they get, and, and they start to look around less. The other thing is, as the adrenaline begins to leave them and fatigue slightly sets in, horses become... Uh, much more tunnel visions onto their fences and the job at hand, and, and anything peripheral becomes less less uh, at the centre. So it'd be interesting to see how this young horse reads this Mirage Water question for William Fox Pitt. And the flag was left standing. That was quite good, the way the horse looked at that. He, he did turn on an inside line very obliquely angled. He has a lot of faith in this horse, and that was incredible. And the horse was just answered the question. But, but, but in many ways, that slow, spooky jump helped the turn, didn't it? But no wonder he's been excited about this horse. This is class. And absolutely, as Ian rightly pointed out, no danger with either of those flags. Here he is, the Knight in the Heights. He told us he was going to go for the one we've seen everybody so far jump. Just takes his time through here. Again, very clever just to allow the horse that extra second to get his ears focused onto the fence so the horse completely understood the question. And, and only about 10 seconds lost through the whole vicarage section. Christopher Burton, Christopher's got two inside the top dozen. This is Graf Liberty in ninth on 27.7. That's for a former winner of the Burnley five-star level event and winner of the Event Rider Masters Series last year here. Very effortless through those corners, wasn't it? He didn't waste a second. Coming back towards the lake, William Fox Pit and Little Fire, the first of two rides for William here at Badminton. And the question there is really that that turn from the second to the third and almost if you can try and jump the first one not not as straight as you'd like a aiming to the right hand side of the second you can put your turn in there and make the second half of that combination slightly shallower very very nicely just and they take the right hand option and they're coming to the famous lake the most successful rider at this level in the sport 14 wins including two of them here at badminton 
Get a real sense that he's just able to pop and take his time, let the horse focus. Beautifully done. Was beautiful, quite right. And this is why this man has a reputation for being one of the most stylish, successful horsemen of his generation. Christopher Burton and Graf Liberty coming to the Outlander Bank. Seen this in a little while, but we haven't seen any great problems here, and that was probably the tidiest of anyone. Yeah, we haven't seen anything go on the one stride yet, which is kind of what we were worried about. But you know, these horses are incredible animals, and, the, and they've been trained for this. This is the this is the ultimate in their career. Um, they know what they're doing. They've got self-preservation. They love the sport as much as we do, and it shows. And almost more than the training, you're, you're honing their natural instincts, aren't you? And, and this is where these horses are highly evolved to be able to cope with traveling across country, which is what they've spent millions of years having to do. <laughs> Easy. They're taking a nice, neat line through there. Christopher Burton has a reputation as being a rider who picks up very few time penalties on any run. Is he about to get close to or inside this optimum time? He's been very economic in his jumping and his lines, but he's never looked in a hurry, has he? I mean, it'll be interesting to see what the time is like. So Christopher with two inside our top dozen. Ralph Liberty at the Mirage Water. This is a master class in riding yeah. across country, isn't it? I mean, it's quite spectacular. Ian, that ditch, it's, it's got the, the toe, toe lines, but it's, it's naturally finished. And does that make it different in the way you would think about it? Yeah, I, you know, I think a lot of people were concerned that they didn't know whether the horses would read it. I mean, the horses are reading it incredibly well. Um, it's how they jump it. You don't really know how they're going to react to it because it's not an offense that we see regularly. And he's Christopher Burton never looked in a hurry, looked effortless the entire way, and he's spot on the time at the moment. So our thanks to Harry Mead, who was our first guest here today, and uh, joining us now is uh, British Olympian and one of our early finishers, Tina Cook. Tina, how did it go for you? No, uh, Star Witness was was going very well. We just um, had a mistake. He looked into the bottom of the ditch, and uh, I decided to retire him after 20. There was no uh, need to carry on. He's been around Burley four times. He's been around here. Um, so now I've just walked back. Sorry. It's my, <laughs> my, my Tuckerism. <laughs> oh, lovely to talk about the great man. But he's well, though, the horse is. Actually, he has just slightly tied off. Um, I, I didn't feel that at all. Um, the first half of the course felt great. He was really going well. Um, he, he just poked into and missed that log. And a, a 20 penalties for a horse of his standard, there's no need to carry on. Um, but yeah, he's just got a little bit of muscle cramp. So um, he obviously wasn't on top form either. So in the end, it was a good decision. Oh, he saw one there. He came, came and he's really had a go at that fence here. Yeah, brilliant stride off the turn. It, it's always much easier to see your stride off of, of a bend or a curb. You can you can ride it forward. A little more accuracy here, though, and perfectly in. A great shot from the drone here. The fence after the, the, the house-shaped step is further away this year than it was two years ago in their last use, but they're jumping better. Well, I think it's because last year there was a massive drop-in and the horses were travelling and it was more difficult to adjust and they weren't reading the step out. Um, the same step, but they're coming off a bending line, so it's much easier for the riders to get the horses prepared, um, Tina. Well, that, that's how I imagined it, it to be, exactly that. You're landing and a lot more in balance, and you can actually present the horses correctly. Well, this is a horse that Ian has been enjoying watching right the way around, just at the final combination, William Foxpit and Little Fire. Two more jumping efforts for them, but quite a long way to go, including all the way uphill into the ring. He's a very beautiful horse. William will be thrilled. Um, he's produced him as a youngster. And he's just galloped around here so effortlessly. But he would want to give this horse a good first experience with the crowds. They've got to enjoy it. And as you can see, the horse's ears are pricked. 
He's not looking the fastest, but he is just keeping that relentless gallop all the way to the end, and that is what you need. He was a little spooky with the crowds at the beginning, but he's just grown in stature as he's, as he's gone on. He's thought a huge amount of this horse, and all along he thought, no, Little Fire is my one that is back to the big time, and he'll be so pleased with that. Well, William Foxfit is the fastest around this course so far. 29 seconds over, 11.6 time penalties.